Hey guys, King Gath here with another episode of Bethesda Mod School. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to be more efficient at creating the building plan stages. And so for this, I'm going to assume you've gone through the static collection tutorial, you've gone through making building plans, and hopefully you've gone through and done the XEdit scripting method version of creating building plans, which will make you way faster at getting all of the Sims Elements data into the building plan form. So if you haven't gone through any of that stuff, definitely go back and check out those tutorials. But the purpose of this and the, the audience for this or anybody who's looking to speed up their workflow in creating the building plan stages for some settlements to get the player those nice transitions from being built so that it doesn't feel like the building just pops in after a minute. And instead, you will see little updates where it kind of pops in over time. And so to do that effectively, you need a good workflow. And that's what I'm going to try and show you here because there's a a lot of little things you can run into, little mistakes you can make. There are things you can do to improve your workflow and keep yourself more organized. And I'm hoping that I can show you some of that. And in the process, I'm also going to teach you some new hotkeys and show you some tricks to correct mistakes you may have made in the past in an easier way. So I'm going to intentionally make a couple of mistakes in here uh, so that I can show you how to fix them. So You'll notice here that I've got a version of a building that I built previously in those tutorials. And what this actually is, is I've actually got the level two built and the level one. So the level one that you guys saw me build on camera real quick is this guy. And then I quickly built a level two, which is on its own layer. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to do nested layers, because layers are really important to keep yourself organized. And they make working with stuff like stages a lot, lot easier, because you can more quickly visualize kind of how things are coming together. So. To make children layers, there's two things you can do. One is you can actually just drag layers around. So if you move a layer so that it slides underneath an existing layer, it, will, it can create a child layer of that. So that's one way you can do it. You can also right click on a layer and collect, correct, select create child layer. And uh, what I recommend you do is stick to your naming scheme and that's because layers are actually, ob they're actually forms, they're actually objects in the creation kit, and they're under miscellaneous layers, and so each of them has to be uniquely named. So if you don't use your prefix, you might accidentally name your layer something that a vanilla layer is, and then the game will just let you, or the creation kit will let you use that vanilla layer, and then you could end up in all sorts of trouble down the road. So uh, definitely stick with your prefixing. I also like to prefix with the name of the building that I'm working on, so that all of them stay nicely organized. So in this case, you'll see that I've named uh, the stage I originally built on as L1, and then I created a new state or new layer, rather not stage, a, a new layer for level two, and then I created one for our stages, which is what we're going to work on in this particular lesson. I also created one for clutter, and I took all that clutter, like the door and the bed and everything, and I hid those uh, on that, and we're just going to hide that layer. We don't really need that for that for this particular tutorial. All right, so getting the building stages is uh, pretty easy if you do it with the static collection method. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do that as quickly as I can. And uh, but I'm obviously I'm going to go slow so I, I can explain it. But the idea here is that the process is really simple, and there's no reason for you to skip this. I know some add-on pack authors have in the past. A lot of times that was ha having to do with file size more than the actual work effort. So if you've seen other add-on packs skip this phase, know that it wasn't really to save themselves the effort because you're going to see the effort isn't that much. But originally when we designed some settlements, we weren't able to use these static collections because we didn't have the method with using the xedit scripts to generate the building plans and that's what allows you to use actual static collections and static collections don't take any extra file space up so they don't really add any bloat to the mod so there's really no reason not to use them so once you've got your two building or your multiple levels done in this case i'm only showing you level one and level two because the process to get your building stages between level one and level two is the same as to go to level two and level three. So there's no reason for me to show you both. You can figure it out after I've shown it to you once. So let's start with the easy one and that's getting from construction to level one. So we're gonna hide our level two and we're gonna reveal our level one. And we're also going to reveal our uh, building plan stages. Now, I'm going to hide this and show you something. So I've actually created a copy of my static collection on the stages layer. Now, the reason for that is that if you ever leave a layer without any items, so if this ever goes to zero or you delete the last one, and actually I'll just go ahead and show you, what happens is in your layer panel, that layer gets hidden, which is a real pain in the butt. And the only way to get it back is to press new layer and enter in the exact name of that. And so that's why I have this other object window here filtered with my thing so that I can quickly grab the names of these. 
So to grab a name of something, you can click on it once, so it highlights, click it again, and it will make it so you can rename it, and then you can just press Control C on your keyboard, and then Escape so you don't rename it, and then you have that name. So then I can press OK here and say yes to bring it back. So it's a good idea to try and leave something on every stage every time. Um, now it's not always uh, plausible, or it's not always, uh, you'll not always remember to do that, but uh, if you think of it, do so. It'll just make your life easier with not losing track of these layers. Uh, so what we want is to, we're going to be operating on the stages layer, and the way we end up doing the early, early building plans, or the early building stages rather, is by working with the static collections of our level. So we're going to go ahead and uh, duplicate this. And because I had the stages layer as the active one, the duplicate gets created on that particular layer. So now we can hide our level one. And uh, we're going to leave that there. We're not going to mess with it. Now, I'm going to show you a little trick I like to do for getting the level one building stages done. It's real quick and easy. And uh, the reason that I do this is going to seem weird at first because for this particular building, you can clearly see that there should be probably about six stages because you would basically, with each stage, remove one of the six pieces until you have none left. Um, but if you didn't know how many stages you were going to do, it can be kind of awkward to name them because let's say you just start removing pieces. Well, you might not be be certain how many are going to be left at the end or if you're going to end up with four stages or five stages or ten stages. And so the naming scheme can kind of become a problem here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, fragment this guy. So we're going to use the hotkey Alt to you and press yes. Note that when you fragment something, all of the pieces get created on whatever layer has that A next to it. All right, so now we've got this thing broken down. So what I like to do for this is I will just start deleting pieces off of my level one model. So we're gonna just delete the doorway. We are gonna just keep this real simple um, for this model since it's such a simple model. If you had a more complex one, you could delete multiple pieces, but we're gonna just delete one. Then you highlight everything. And then you're going to control and click on your alignment helper and then do it again. And you had to, you've had to do this throughout. And that is to make sure that the alignment helper is the very last piece selected. And that way it becomes the origin of your building. If you ever fail to do this, you'll end up with your plot will kind of offset on the plot when you build it in game. And you'll, so you'll know right away when you made that mistake. And I'm actually going to show you how to fix that in a moment. But uh, uh, first, we're going to create this guy. So we're going to press Alt-O to create our static collection. And we're gonna follow our naming scheme. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, grab our name for that. And we're gonna call this stage one. Actually, this is, this is where the naming is gonna get wonky. So if you knew exactly what the number of stages were gonna be, you would know what to name this. So if I name this stage one, that's actually incorrect because this is actually the last stage before level one. So this is actually going to be a later stage. And so that can get awkward with the naming. So what I like to do is I name these, instead of stage, I'll name this minus. So basically what I'm telling myself is this is one, so minus one. So one stage before the end, before it reaches level one. And you'll see how, how this is uh, useful at the end after we finish them all. So we're gonna go ahead and press okay. We're gonna generate these static collections. That gets generated. And then I'm gonna just add in an extra character here to see that it pops up. All right, so then we're going to, once again, fragment this guy. And then we'll go ahead and remove another piece. And we're gonna just repeat this process. Again, control clicking to make sure that's the last one. And again, you can right click or press Alt plus O. We'll paste this in again. And this time we're gonna do minus two. And we're not gonna do a full six stages because you guys, I think you guys are getting the point by now. So we'll just do one more. Uh, let's, okay, that created. Fragment this and then we'll delete two this time, select them all, control click, and once more, and then minus three. So now you could continue to do that with no matter how complex your particular uh, building was and get it down until you are comfortable with something that looks like it would make a great stage one. So then what happens is the this will, these will appear one after the other for the player. It They appear at the pace of however long that particular building plan or that level is going to take to build. So in the case of most players, it's gonna take about one minute. It will divide out the number of stages you have into second chunks and it will place one of those models every X seconds. So if it was gonna take 60 seconds and you had six stages, then every 10 seconds it would place another stage. And I find six is a good number. That feels pretty good in the game. It feels like you're seeing some progress if you decide to stay and watch, but it doesn't feel so rapid fire that it looks ridiculous. So it looks like the, you know, maybe the, 
uh, NPC had some time to go out and get pieces and put them back into place. And obviously it's all simulated. You could do way more if you want. You could do way less. I would say I wouldn't go more than one per second. That would might look real bad. Um, but, uh, you know, if you wanted to get crazy and do 50 stages or something for construction, you absolutely could. It doesn't really add a lot to the performance. The only thing it does add is a little tiny, tiny bit of uh, increased size to script usage, but it's almost non-existent because these stage models uh, take up so little space in the building plan record. So there's really no downside to building extra stages other than it takes you a little extra work. Uh, but as you can see with this method, it's not much work. All right, so once you've got it done, now you basically can rename these models into a way that makes sense. So basically your last, your lowest minus becomes your stage one because, and you can confirm that by just uh, previewing it. You can see that, yep, that was the one I want to be stage one. And then you just work backwards from there. So then this is gonna be stage one. Uh, we don't want to create a new, we just want to rename. So then the, the next one up would be stage two. And that's a great way to do it when you're working backwards like that from your level and you're not sure how many stages you're going to end up with. If you, again, you knew exactly how many stages, then you could just name these exactly correct from the get go. So if I knew I was doing th three stages, I would know the first one I created backwards would be stage three, then two, then one, etc. But when you don't know, I like using that minus numbering system and then just renaming them in reverse uh, based on the stage. So that gives us our model. So if we were to go ahead and drag these in, and I can actually show you guys a new hotkey. Uh, if you press Control Shift A while you have something selected, it brings up this little cursor and you can click on something else and it will align that to it. So then we can do the same with this. Control Shift A, click on this, and now they're all aligned here. And then if I select one and hide it, you can see that the player would have seen that exact thing in reverse. So they would see this, and then the uh, next one would appear, and then this final one would appear, and then finally, our building plan at level one would appear. And so that's kind of how the player would see it. It would go one after the other. All right, so now we're gonna go back here. Um, we're going to, once again, we were gonna bring a level one static collection on here. And we'll do our little control shift A trick to align it. And we're gonna hide that one temporarily. And then we're gonna delete all these off of here. And the reason I did that is again, because I don't want to have to re-add this to the stage. Uh, and then we'll hit alt one to unhide this thing again. All right, so now I'm going to show you uh, how to fix something if you make the mistake of uh, of accidentally misaligning things or if you forget to select this alignment helper. So uh, I'm going to have to first make the mistake. So we're going to go ahead and uh, recreate this guy. So we're going to uh, fragment it and we're going to just grab these arbitrarily and then recreate it. And uh, I'm going to just name this guy uh, L1S call uh stupid uh, because uh, it's a it, it, you're gonna feel real stupid when you make that mistake enough times but you we all do it everybody even experienced with this often will forget that step um, so then if we go ahead and set this at zero 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 now you'll see that it's offset and we can confirm that by if we bring our original back and put this at zero zero whoops I uh, if you just push the whoa I was holding alt when I just moved my mouse wheel and so it started zooming that I apparently I've never seen this before if you push the zero key on your uh, uh, your numpad with uh, with not the box entry opened, it just changes your view, which is interesting. Um, but okay, so we're gonna bring this up, we're gonna set this to zero, zero, zero. And you can see the original model is correctly aligned where we expect it, and then this guy is offset. So if you ever have something like that happen in the game where one of your stages builds offset, it means you forgot to set that alignment helper. So to fix that is very easy. So it doesn't even actually matter where you position it. You can just drag this onto the stage. So I'm gonna delete this and just show you the whole process. So let's find our stupid one. So bring up the stupid, just drag that anywhere into a thing. It doesn't actually have to be at zero, zero for this particular purpose. Uh, then you're gonna fragment it. And then you just rebuild it. So you just select all these, make sure you select that as your last one. And then we'll hit uh, make static collection again. You could use the hotkey if you want. And the trick here is you use the exact same name so that it overwrites it. And then that way it'll update the positioning. So we press OK here. It's going to confirm. Do you want to check out overwrite its data? You say yes. And now if we set this guy to 000, zero, zero You'll see that it lines up perfectly. So if you make the mistake and you see one of those, it's real easy to fix. Drag it anywhere on the stage and just fragment it and recreate it with the exact same name. All, all done, <laughs> nothing else you gotta do. Uh, so it's not a, a big deal if you ever make that mistake. So now we're going to make sure we have the uh, stupid one selected. So here's another little trick. Um, if you're trying to figure out which thing you have selected, you can come over to your cell view and press selected only. And we can see and make sure we have the stupid one selected. We do, so we can delete that. All right, so now let's talk about 
building the level one to level two. So this is a little trickier and kind of takes some creativity. And the first step I think is the easiest one to pull off. And then once you've got that first step made, the rest become pretty simple as well. So uh, what I like to do is I will unhide my next level. So now you can see we've got our copy of the level one on our stages uh, layer, and then we've got our level two revealed. Well, it's kind of awkward to work from this. So what we're going to do is we're going to select our level two building. And if you're uncertain, if you have it selected, you can either do that trick of looking down here at selected only, or you could also right click on hit here and hit select all loaded references and layer. All right. So then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we have our render window activated and we're going to press the number one key once and then click off of it. And you, now you get this semi translucent view of that particular building so you can see what you're working with. So now you get to see both in place and you can kind of look at this and get an idea of what you want to do as your first in-between stage. What I tend to do is think about it as if I were the settler and I was going to remodel. In this case, I would for the first thing I would do would be tear down this wall so that I could make room for more. So what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and fragment this guy. And then we're going to delete this wall. And then we'll, then what we need to do here, normally you would think you could just select all these, but that does actually select the items from layer two, even though they're in this ghosted state, you can still drag select them. So even though you can't click select them, you can drag select them. So now that we've got this in a position, in a, a state we like, you're gonna wanna hide that level two again. All right, so then we just go ahead and create this one and we'll remember to uh, control click twice on our alignment helper, so it's last. And in this case, we know this is going to be the first stage, so we don't actually need to do that minus thing. Um, you know, you might still want to, maybe you wanna work backwards after you have this, you wanna work backwards from there, you could. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm gonna work forward because it's very clear. Occasionally you'll get a situation, like if you look at the dead end weapons model from Sim Settlements, the commercial plot, you'll see that each of the state of the levels looks substantially different from the other. When you have building models like that, you kinda are forced to get creative with the building stages. You can't do it as simply as what I'm about to show you. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and uh, name this level two stage one. You'll see that some of my building plans, if you were to look through the Sim Settlements files, you'll see that sometimes I just continue the stage numbering so then this just becomes stage four stage five if you find that confusing you can do it like I'm doing now um, that uh, I just know this is the stage one of level two so we can confirm that that actually showed up there there it is and so now we've got our first stage so then the next ones for the rest of these after you get your stage one done which is generally going to be uh, what I, I like to do is part is take level one and remove some pieces from it. Then from there on, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to work from our level two building and remove a bunch of pieces. So to do that, we're going to drag our level two in here and we're going to hit control shift a to align it to that. And then we're going to fragment this guy and we're going to work from that. So what we're going to want to do here is select the uh, level one version so it's hard to do here so we're going to hide this guy and we're just going to go ahead and delete that just we're going to take a mental note we, we want it to look we want to start off with this and uh, work from that so uh, delete that and then press alt one again to unhide the one that we just hid by pressing one twice all right so then we just work exactly the same way that we did in the uh, building the level ones except that we're we have the at each time we do this we're going to have to delete more pieces because we are starting with the full model and not just the partial model. So you'll see what I mean in just a second. So we're gonna go ahead and fragment this guy and say yes. And so we know that our previous model, like our level, our stage one, didn't have any of this stuff. So we need to think about it from that perspective. So in this case, I'm gonna delete multiple pieces and we'll say this is gonna be our stage two. So stage one was just these pieces and then stage two will say they built the floor and then they added the back wall on. And again, we'll control click and press Alt O. And we're gonna copy this guy doing the trick of clicking to select, clicking again to get the text, control C and then escape. So lots of hotkeys, uh, lots of hotkeys to speed you up. That's gonna be your uh, bread and butter as you get moving with these and wanna build your buildings more, more quickly. Uh, and then we'll press okay. And now we've got our number two. So then we're gonna again, drag this guy on here, align it press one twice to hide it and then delete this one and then alt one to unhide it. So again, tons and tons of hotkeys are how you're gonna speed up your workflow with this. All right, so we knew the previous one had just the, the floor and the back wall. So this time we'll add 
the uh, right wall and the roof. So let's fragment this. Which means that if that's all we're going to do, we're just going to delete that front panel. Um, I like to do, so there are two approaches you could take to this. On some of my building plans, I've left the roof to last because that to me makes the most sense from a structural standpoint. But when you're thinking about it from what's visually uh, appealing to the players, it to me it always makes sense to leave the front panels as some of the last pieces. Just because once you put the front panel on it from the player's height where they're going to be standing down here, they're, once this wall is there, they're not going to be able to see that roof anymore so they won't see that that got added. So you often got to think about things from the perspective of where is the player's camera going to actually be able to see. So when things are happening above their height, it tends to be better to have those, unless they're way above to where they can see them above the walls, you just got to think about how things are masked and that's kind of a more advanced thing if you don't want to think about that and you're more interested in the immersion of the structural engineering by all means do it in that order instead um, so go ahead and select all this control click and make static collection and I keep altering between the hotkey method and the right click method because I know that not all of you are interested in memorizing these 400 hotkeys I keep mentioning um, so I'm giving you some options there all right, so let's uh, see. So we were on stage two, so now this is our stage three. So we'll copy paste that and change that to a three. And now we don't need to do the front wall because the front wall is actually included with this. So now we've got our three stages. So I'm just going to uh, show you how that will look. So if we bring in our stage one again, and control shift A. There is no hotkey for the alignment, the or, or a non-hotkey method to do the alignment other than bringing this up and typing in the zero, zero, zero. So. Uh, control shift a align that and then our stage three is already there so then we just need this guy and so if we bring in so here's another cool trick you can do in the cell view you can actually type in the name of something and then check in filtered only and then all of those will appear so now I can select them all and let's uh, press one twice to hide them all and then we're going to select stage one we'll press uh, and we'll unhide it do one at a time i guess you can't so i guess i'm wrong in that uh so I, I thought that there was a way to unhide one at a time but there so there's an interesting thing with this if you get used to using 3d studio max which i actually hope to cover some tutorials in that soon uh with 3d studio max you'll see that there's a lot of the hotkeys and uh possibilities that the creators of the creation kit kind of follow the exact same pattern i don't know which came first uh, i'm assuming 3ds max came first but uh i could definitely be wrong on that or it just happens to be a common set of hotkeys but it looks to me like the interface is very similar so a lot of times when i'm working in the creation kit i will start trying to use 3ds max uh hotkeys or methodology and it will turn out that that doesn't work but as we can see here here's our level two there's our uh stage three and kind of hide it hiding backwards you can see how it's going to work for the players and so you can do that same kind of concept from level two to level three it works exactly the same way and again if you want once you want to get all of these stages into your building plan you do need to use the X edit method, which just involves essentially taking the names of these particular stages and uh, and model and the level models for the static collections, you basically put them into a column in a spreadsheet, and you tell X edit to use that spreadsheet, and it's real easy. So definitely go check out those tutorials. But guys, I hope this gave you some tips on working with stage models. It's very very easy. There's no excuse not to include them uh, because they take no size and they take very minimal effort to create, and they add a ton of immersion for players. So. Guys, I hope to see you guys pumping out more and more building plans. Uh, I've seen a lot of great stuff coming out of the community in the Discord channel. If you're looking for help with modding, definitely you can join us up. Just head to the simsettlements.com forums and uh, ask around. Somebody will point you to that. We don't make it particularly easy to get on the Discord because we're trying to avoid just a flood of non-mod author uh, people coming in. We want people who are interested in learning. It's not meant to be a help channel for actually playing with Sim Settlements. So uh, we will happily get you in there. And especially if you're looking for help with designing with Sim Settlements, we got tons of the add-on pack authors who are there. Many of them are very helpful and can help you guys through learning these things as they too were new at modding once and uh, I'm sure are looking to kind of pay it forward and help you guys out. So we'd love to see you there. All right, guys, take care and stay tuned for more Bethesda Mod School.